discounted payback period okay so the model therefore allows a discounted cash flow basis on calculation of the payback period okay so discounted payback period is the same method like what we used but it uses the uh, discounted concept here okay so to work out this first we'll just we can just copy the the table as it is and then we can work out it okay so we will work out with this problem see so in this problem we have we should have like uh, one more one or two more columns okay we have to get one or two more columns so the column is going to be a discount factor So the discount factor in this sum it's going to be 10 percent and this leads us to uh, discounted cash flow so discounted cash flow is also called as DCF. So we will put the short term words here. So this is going to be discount factor at 10%. So this is what we are going to use from here on in all the sums and DCF, right? So we will use these terminologies. Then we have to get cumulative discounted cash flows. Okay. So this is what we are going to do. So to work out this kind of a problem, okay, we have to get, uh, we have to start from the value zero, okay, the year zero. So why do we need to start? Then only we can do the sum properly. So if you are going to have a discount factor of 10%, then how should we work out the sum? See, the sum should be worked out like this. You put the number one, okay, divided by, uh, so the first year it is always one, okay. Zero refers to today the year zero refers to today okay and one refers to the year end year okay the end of the first year okay so if you want i will uh, i'll add one more column so that you will get a better idea Okay, I'll put it here. So the year zero refers to today. Okay, and the year one refers to uh, year one end. Okay, so today is so if you want a date, we can also put a date there so that it is like better for you to understand the concept. Okay, so, so today we will assume it to be 1, 1, 1, uh, 20, 21. So that is today. Year 1 end refers to 31, 12, uh, 21. Okay, so 20, 21. So we can put it like that. And what is year 2? See, year 2 refers to year 2 end. That means so this is the first year end so the second year end will be 22 okay so similarly it keeps on rolling okay let's see whether it is working out okay so similarly it keeps on rolling 
and this also would be working in the same way so this is year 3 end year 3 refers to year 3 end 4 refers to year 4 end and year 5 refers to 5 end okay so the first day is always the today okay and year 1 means it's the end of the year okay 365 days have moved okay so that's about the concept here so if you work out the concept here so the value of money has fallen down so how much it has fallen down so to find out how much it has fallen down you work out in this manner you take the previous number right and divide it by 1 okay that's a formula plus the discount factor okay the discount factor is how much 10 percent so it would be another 0.1 okay that's it so once you have done this you will get a, a discount factor number okay you get a discount factor number so we'll just like remove the zeros okay we'll have three decimals you should always take the number in terms of after the decimal three numbers you have to take so what would be the next formula the next formula is similar thing the previous number divided by 1.1 that's it the first time alone you have to put it as the previous number divided by 1.1 again you have to put previous number divided by 1.1 the same methodology you have to keep continuing that's it you will get the all the discount factors okay you will get all the discount factors so this is about the uh, discount factors see this is one way of getting it this is one way of getting the discount factors okay so if you want i can just like put it here the discount factor could be 1 divided by 1 uh, plus the discount factor percentage okay if you have to put in that manner this is one way of getting it or you can take a normal calculator so i'm not sure whether we'll get a normal calculator here but we'll try it okay so here uh, assume that we will work out in a normal calculator in the normal calculator you are going to do the same thing 1 divided by 1.1 1 .1 and you press the equal button so if you press the equal button it comes to 0 0.909 just check whether it is there yes in the first year it is 1 0 0.909 simply what you can do is in the normal calculator you have to keep on pressing so the second year number will be see this is not coming because it is not working as per the normal calculator it is not working let's see whether we have any other calculator because in normal calculators you have the uh, memory function so it works there well see this is the first one this is the first year number for second year number you have to actually just enter just put an equal button again again if you press you will get the answer here it is not working okay here it is not working but in normal calculator if you keep on pressing the equal button you will get the answer okay you will get the answer we will try once more time in some other calculator so we'll just try in one more calculator mostly in online calculators it's not working so just check check it once so we'll try it once more one more time one divided by 1.1 once you put equal again you have to put equal you will get the second year number let's see see this one is like perfectly working this is the second year number the second time you press the equal button it comes to 0 0.826 the third time if you press it gives you the third number the fourth time you press you get the fourth year number the fifth year time you press equal you will get the fifth year number but you have to be very sure like how you are clicking it okay you have to be very sure on how you are clicking it so i will put this calculator also uh, somewhere here for your purpose okay for your purpose i will put it here so i will also add the hyperlink okay this is the hyperlink so you can use it when you want it okay it works very similarly to a uh, uh, real world calculator okay physical calculator so this is the second way of finding out okay through calculator you can find out so the first way was to find out ways to find uh, or ways to compute compute a discount factor so this is the first way 
the second way is through calculator the third way is through present value table so this is a much more easier approach we will just look at it in in a minute see there are there is something called as a present value table so in online itself you will get or even in books you will have it so present value table so there are like lots of tables here okay whichever table you want you can uh, uh, have a look at i think we will look at here but be very sure with the online table whether it tells you the present value table see this is a present value table so we will just look at it so you have a present value table hope i could uh, save this so the present value table is always i'll show you how to find out the present value table so that you will get the idea see i could have used a table directly but you should know how to download it and then use it so i'll tell how the present value table can be found out correctly even there are like many tables how you can find out the correct table so if you see here the present value interest factor of one dollar per period at uh, interest percentage for n periods okay so if you see the present value table the starting number will always be uh, zero okay the starting number will always be zero so you can see here it is always all numbers are starting with zero okay that is one trick the second trick that i usually use is i usually remember what is the 10 percent discount factor okay because I uh, the, that is how normally sums usually come up. So I know what is the discount for, factor for 10% I know thoroughly. It's going to be 0 0.090, oh, sorry, 0 0.909, 826, 751, 683, 621. So I know it exactly. So what happens is uh, I can easily uh, remember the 10% alone for some 5 years. If this is correct, then all numbers are present value numbers. Okay. So let's look at how we used it in the uh table see this is 10 percent discount factor we need for first to five years okay first to five years so if you look at here that is how it works so i'll just like make a small screen capture for you so that you guys can understand it i'll put it here okay so you got it here so hopefully you can now compare it so it's see first year it is always one the table will not give for the zeroth year so even if you say the t table for zero year it will never give you the number it is always one only for any percentage thereafter see 909-826-751-683-621 okay so it's like quite easier to find out through the table so assuming you have found find out found out the discount factor through the formula or calculator or pv table however you do it you have to now come to the concept of uh, discounting the cash flows so how do you discount the cash flows it's very simple multiply multiply the cash flow into the discount factor just multiply it you will get the answer do the same thing for all the years it is done okay it is done so it is just what multiplication of cash flow into discount factor okay done now you have to accumulate okay the first number alone the first number alone is going to be 4545.45 done from the second number it is accumulation okay it's accumulation so what you do is previous number plus the current second year number if you add you will get the accumulation just keep on doing the same thing again and again you will get the accumulated cash flow see now you see the same table this is similar to the 
cash flow table sorry this is similar to the payback method that we computed but look how this is different see this is payback okay this is discounted payback okay so you can see the difference here so cumulative cash flow there it was like 5000 9000 12000 14000 but here if you see it's like totally a different different numbers okay so how do you know whether what you have done is like correct okay just one second i will try to remove the zero okay hopefully i've removed the zero uh, okay sorry i think we've done it so if you see the numbers would be a reduced numbers than the normal cash flow numbers so if it is 5000 here it will not be 5000 it will be a lo lower number here the cumulative is 9000 here it will be lower okay the last number is 16600 here it is only 13000 okay so the number will be a lower number okay because the value of money is falling so that's the reason so let's get our payback done okay let's get our discounted payback answer so again the methodology is same see in which year the 12000 is crossed the 12000 is crossed in the year in this part that means it is crossing in the fourth to fifth year that means minimum it requires four years plus some part of it okay so totally we have invested 12000 in the fourth year in the fourth year we are getting 11471 right and divided by how much we are getting in the next year in the next year we are getting 2600 so 2600 just put it and you can get the answer now we'll start solve it step by step so this alone we'll try to solve first so the numerator comes to 529 so 529 529 divided by 2600 the answer should come to this number so the answer comes to 0 0.2 right so the final answer is 4.2 years so you can also represent this in terms of months so the answer would be uh, four years and 0 0.2 into the months 12 months so that will come to four years and 2.4 months or you can simply tell it as four years and and round it off okay as it's point 0.4 just round it off either side you want okay you can just put it as four years and two months okay so hope you guys got a good idea here right that's about the discounted payback method okay so this answer is four years so we'll do one more problem in the payback discounted payback method itself so that you get a better idea so we shall start with this problem so we have already worked out uh, the numbers for this problem so we'll just take those numbers and we'll continue forward so to work out the discounted cash flow we have to have a few more columns so let's add that we need the discount factor at so in this sum it is 12 percent and then we have the dcf discounted cash flow so both we will maximize so we have to get the discount factor so we'll start with the zero here then only it's easier to find out the discount factor here so the discount factor would be for the zero tier it is one 
thereafter it's going to be equal to the previous number divided by one point in last sum we had 0.1 10 percent we had so it was 0.1 here we have 12 percent so it becomes 0.12 okay that's it you got the factor you can just copy and paste it for other cells so if you are working with a calculator we will again use the calculator and show you the same numbers so we will get the number you can see here 1 divided by 1.12 i'll press equal you'll get the first year discount factor so you got it 892 this is second time you press equal it is second year discount factor third time you press third discount factor fourth and fifth so you got the five year discount sorry five year discount factors you have got so the second approach and the other approach is to find out through the present value table so you have 12 percent here i'll just zoom it so that you can have an idea so i'll just copy and paste it so 12 percent i'll copy and i will just paste it paste it here so that you can just have an idea so hope the numbers are same right it's a uh, similar numbers here so we don't need to have so many numbers we can reduce them we just need after decimal three numbers okay so remove this from here i'll just remove it and i'll put it somewhere here so we'll start calculating the discounted cash flow discounted cash flow is nothing but cash flow multiplied by the discount factor and we will do it for all the years again like what we did we will reduce the decimals okay so we got our numbers so now so now we will accumulate them so if you accumulate them uh, previous year plus this year okay sorry cumulative plus this year we get the number so keep on doing the same thing so if you do here if you, it looks like cumulative plus this year in the same way you have to do for all the numbers so whether you did uh, is correct or not you if you want to check just add all these numbers so the total of this should be equal to the cumulative so if i put the sum you can see here this number and this number are same so the total of all these numbers and the cumulative of all these numbers should be same okay so it's just a just to verify you don't need to do this just to verify if you want you can do this okay so we got our cumulative cash flow also so now we will move on to the in which year it is crossing so that is the important one so we have invested 1 lakh 40 thousand so in which year it is crossing so if you look at here uh, it is not crossing at all okay it's not crossing at all that is the cumulative cash flow seems to be uh, just 1 lakh 32 thousand but 1 lakh 40 thousand is the requirement okay we need to have 1 lakh 40 but uh, it is not at all meeting that number okay it's not meeting that number at all okay so we can simply say that uh, as a suggestion usually this doesn't happen in an exam okay you they will give a number uh, which is like uh, you can compute the discounted payback but here what we'll do we'll write a suggestion saying that as the cumulative cumulative discounted cash flow cash flow is lower than lower than the investment it is better to not invest in the project okay so so it is not it is better not to invest in this project because it's not giving us any positive cash flow okay 
so so that's about this sum so we don't need to compute here after because we are not crossing this 140000 is not crossing at all okay so this is about the discounted payback sum here so in the earlier sum at least we got an answer here also we got an answer but the answer is do not invest okay so let's go to the next method